Hi, my name is David Warner Matheson, and for the past 10 years, I've been exploring the overwhelming evidence that the world's ancient myths, scriptures, and sacred stories are virtually all based on a common worldwide system of celestial metaphor. They're based on the stars. They're based on the constellations and the heavenly cycles. By that, I mean that the characters and the episodes in the myths, from the Greek myths, to the myths of ancient Egypt, ancient China, ancient India, the Norse myths, the stories in the Bible from first to last, those characters and episodes are based on the constellations. And this is a worldwide system. The myths from the Americas, from the Pacific, from Australia, Africa, other parts of Asia, other parts of Europe, are based on a common worldwide system. This is almost uh, impossible to believe, but the evidence is overwhelming. Part of the problem in trying to explain this to people is we don't have a very good understanding of the constellations, where most of us are never taught the constellations. Even if we're familiar with the zodiac signs, many people could not sketch out, for instance, Sagittarius, the stars of Sagittarius, how they look in the night sky, or the stars of Capricorn, or any of the other constellations. As it turns out, the outlines that are shown on Wikipedia or on smartphone apps are really not very helpful either for finding the constellations in the sky or for seeing the connections to the world's ancient myths. So one thing that's very important a tool that we have access to that has not been available in previous centuries is a book by author H.A. Ray, which was published in 1952 called The Stars, A New Way to See Them. And when I explain that to people and say, have you heard of H.A. Ray? A lot of times people say, oh, it sounds familiar, but um, uh, who's H.A. Ray? And I say, well, H.A. Ray, along with his wife, Margaret Ray, created the Curious George books. And then people say, oh, of course I know the Curious George books. Um, a lot of people don't know that H.A. Ray also wrote a wonderful book about the stars called The Stars, A New Way to See Them. And it turns out that those outlines, not only are they excellent for finding the constellations in the night sky, they're also excellent for seeing the connection to the world's ancient myths. And as it turns out, he called his book, The Stars, A New Way to See Them, but it might have been more accurate to say the stars, an extremely ancient way to see them because ancient artwork shows that the outlines used by H.A. Ray, with very few exceptions, are the way that the ancients were envisioning the constellations. His outlines match up with ancient artwork depicting mythical figures that are based on the constellations. And this holds true, as I said, for virtually every culture. It's a system that unites the world's ancient sacred traditions. The Bible is not separate from the Greek myths or the myths of ancient Egypt. They're all closely related by this underlying system and yet this system was in existence before the earliest civilizations that are known to conventional history, before the ancient Mesopotamians because their myth uses it as well and so does their artwork, before the ancient Egyptians, before the ancient civilizations of India all their most ancient texts and scriptures, the Vedas, are also using this system, the same system that underlies the myths and scriptures and sacred traditions the world over. And so it's very likely that this system came from a predecessor culture, a civilization previous to all of these others. In fact, so ancient to them, it may have been as ancient to the 
ancient Egyptians as the ancient Egyptians are to us. There's been many, there have been many researchers such as the late John Anthony West or Graham Hancock and Robert Schock and many others who have discussed the amazing evidence around the world pointing to the existence of a lost and forgotten predecessor culture, a lost civilization. And the mythological evidence is a, another body of evidence that supports all of the archaeological and cultural and other evidence that has been found pointing to some very ancient culture that probably was abruptly uh, destroyed or faced some sort of cataclysm and the remnants of that ancient culture were later used in restarting civilization in the earliest civilizations that we know of such as ancient Egypt or ancient Mesopotamia and that's why it this system underlies the myths and scriptures around the world not that they were necessarily communicating with one another but that they were all descended from this common ancestor and so they're all using this system of celestial metaphor now why would all the myths be using celestial metaphor well we don't know but I believe that that ancient culture was extremely spiritually sophisticated extremely spiritually advanced whoever put together this system was extremely knowledgeable about what they were doing and they were using these incredible metaphors to convey very profound truths truths that we still need in our daily lives they're not only profound truths they're also very practical truths they have to do with subjects such as our higher self and when you say higher self people might say oh I don't really believe in a higher self and yet the subconscious has been known this can be proven to have powers that are very difficult to explain within the conventional materialist system. It's connected in some way to other people and in fact to the wider universe. There are times when people wake up in the middle of the night and have this this premonition or oh, I should call this person and it turns out to be very significant and there's no way they could have really known that through our five physical senses. This has been documented time and time again where people have heard a, pr a plane crash and gone out to, to look for survivors and they were too far away to even really actually hear or perceive that plane crash and yet their subconscious somehow uh, knew about it. It's not limited by our five physical senses. In other words, there's a part of us that is actually doesn't have the same kind of limits that, that we're always taught are the limits of, of what we can perceive. It's actually connected to an unlimited realm, an infinite realm, and that is the realm of the gods that the ancient myths are talking about, the infinite realm. And we all have access to that. That's what the, these metaphors are trying to teach us. At least that's the way I, uh, having looked at them, having looked at many hundred myths, maybe even thousands of myths. Now I've written 10 books uh, with many hundreds of pages uh, explaining the connections between the myths and the stars. And at this point, I believe that at least part of what this system is doing with this amazing metaphors based on the stars is explaining to us about an infinite realm, an unlimited realm that we all have internal access to and I know that every single person who is listening to this, every single man and woman has a subconscious. We all have a subconscious as part of the development into society. There's also a part of us, our subconscious, that we're not very 
well attuned to and it's not as easy to become aware of but the myths are pointing us towards that uh, is inside of us and that's where the myths are talking about they're talking about this internal connection to an unlimited or infinite realm and so I look forward to exploring the myths with you in this website I have many videos there's books there's thousands of blog posts and the blog is fully searchable but I'm really only just scratching the surface this is an amazing treasure it's really uh, unlimited you can never really run out of these myths there's so many uh, you could write volumes and volumes just about the myths of ancient India alone and you could write volumes and volumes about just the stories and characters in the Bible alone really you could write volumes just on the book of Genesis alone and the same for all the other myths ancient Greece the Norse myths the myths of the Americas the Pacific of Asia and so I'm looking forward to exploring them with you here on this website and I hope that uh, that you'll take a look at the evidence with me and then I hope that you'll learn to go to the myths for yourself and listen to them in the language that they're actually speaking which is a metaphorical language it's a, a forgotten language for the most part it comes from a very ancient culture that we don't even really know very much about but the myths are very powerful evidence that there was some culture very very advanced very very ancient and these myths are like a precious inheritance to us from that ancient culture and they can be a real source of blessing in our lives <laughs>